Greetings, this is part four in the Looking Back at Past Planes series. So next up, uh, I revisited the Synapse Flying Wing and added a motor pod to it. And because it was built from Depron and tape, it was very, very light and I could put a, a tiny little 24 gram motor on and it, it just flew really, really nicely, nice and slow, nice and controlled. It was a big success. And then the next plane after that, I decided uh, I was a little bit interested in the two meter radian um, for thermal gliding. So I thought I'd try and build one out of Depron. And um, so I made a, a two meter wingspan um, motor glider, very much like the Photon, the Experimental Airlines Photon, but sort of expanded. And it just looked beautiful and I thought it was gonna be fantastic, but it really didn't fly very well at all. It motored around okay, but as soon as you turned the motor off, it, the glide ratio just disappeared. It just sunk down to the ground so quickly, it was um, unbelievable. I sort of realized then that my Depron was six mil, whereas Experimental Airlines Dollar Tree foam was only five mil. So I was actually making my um, airfoils a bit less than 20% thicker than Ed had designed them to be. And I think that was one of the problems with this two meter motor glider. The cord was too narrow and the airfoil was too thick. But also another big uh, problem I think I had was that the angle of incidence of the wing wasn't correct. Uh, I had the wing um, sitting up a little bit at the front, I believe now, looking back. Uh, and so it was sort of stalling it all the time, never really gliding properly. So that was a big disappointment, but a big learning curve. Uh, the next thing I tried was I revisited the Ansley Peace drone that I first built um, when I first got interested in this hobby, put a motor on it, uh, did some motoring around, I even tried some slope soaring with it and it was probably the worst slope soar I've ever sloped, it really didn't want to turn. It's a great plane for flying in a straight line, great for FPV cruising, but it really doesn't like turning very much. So that was another learning experience. Now to overcome the problem with the fat wings that I was having, I decided to build a really slim wing, see how slim I could build it out of Depron and tape and see how that worked. And so I made this uh, orange slim wing and it flew beautifully, glided beautifully, uh, really, really well controlled. Uh, I was very, very impressed with it. Big improvement over the disaster of a two meter motor glider. So then I tried building a little symmetrical wing for a bit of aerobatics and that also worked very well. Then I decided to build a single boom pusher just to try a different style of plane and that was a bit of an eye opener too because that uh, exhibited really bad adverse yaw. And I think it's this uh, particular f layout of a plane, the single boom pusher with the big fuselage in, sitting in front of the, of the rudder makes for really bad adverse yaw. I think the rudder becomes less effective because it's in the turbulent air behind the fuselage. Um, so without an effective rudder, the ailerons take over the turning and they turn the, the plane the wrong way. So that was another big learning experience. Then I bought, decided to build a 1.5 metre slimish uh, glider wing from Depron and Tape. And that's the red wing build, which uh, turned out to be a, a wonderful wing, flew really, really well, made a beautiful slope soarer, and uh, that was a big success. So then from there, I decided to revisit the two metre slope soarer, two metre motor glider. So I built the same wing out at two metres and that also turned out to be a real, um, really nice slope saw and a nice motor plane as well. Then after that I decided to revisit the single boom pusher design but take out the ailerons and just use rudder elevator and throttle, just a three channel plane. And that made a big difference too, that made the plane so stable that I decided to try my hand at FPV, which was good fun. So the next plane I decided to try was a Depron version of Alex Greaves Spectre. I used a, about a 1.3 metre arm and wing design and I had the wings swept forward a little bit like Alex Greaves did as well and um, a couple of arrow shafts for the booms and that was a real eye opener, that was a fantastic plane. Uh, it really carved through the air, gripped into turns and I think the swept forward wings really um, give it great anti-stall characteristics too. That's an excellent design um, and I will revisit that again soon, I think. So now we come to the Park Zone Radiant. Uh, I decided I wanted to try 
some more thermal gliding. Uh, a lot of my friends had Radians, so I thought it's about time I got one. Everyone raves about them. So I bought the Radian, and it is a wonderful plane. It's an extremely easy plane to catch thermals with, and you can saw around for ages. But the components on it when I got it were really, really poor quality. I was amazed when I was just connecting up the uh, pushrod clevis connectors, one of them broke off. Uh, and the push rods, push rod at the back here was held in with a metal staple just punched into the foam. Thought, what a ridiculous way to build a plane. I just couldn't believe it. So I did a few little mods uh, to strengthen it. Um, and I had seen Paul Natone's mods video. Um, so I did a few of his his mods. I put some carbon fibre along the bottom, a bit of more stiffening in the tail, a bit more stiffening around the, uh, the wing saddle, and um, my colour scheme on the bottom. And I love flying this plane. It's uh, great for a really uh, calm, sunny day. Uh, just cruising around, cruising around with the birds up high, catching thermals. And I've also done some... Um, FPV thermaling with this is too. Great fun. Absolutely love the, the Radian. Uh, it doesn't really have a decent method of holding the wings in, so I've had to add uh, magnets in there. All they need is some plastic clips or something like that, which would be a really good addition. Park Zone Radian, wonderful plane. Highly recommended. So then the next obvious plane to try was the Volantex Phoenix, another two metre uh, thermaling motor glider uh, but I decided to set it up without a motor just to be a pure slope sawer and uh, it makes a brilliant slope sawer I have to tell you the only problem is the wing join is is not up to the rough and tumble of slope soaring landings so I changed it to uh, a rubber band tie down all I've done really is glued in some carbon fiber rods at the front and back glued the wing together and um, add a little bit of reinforcing on the wing where the rubber bands go over. Works beautifully, fantastic plane. Uh, this, although this ends up reasonably heavy, like around 1.2 kilograms, it can slope in really, really light conditions and it blew all my other homemade slope sawers out of the water. It's um, quite a revelation. It seems to be able to uh, create its own lift by the pure momentum of the plane moving through the air. Um, it's quite surprising. It may just be the, the weight and the wing loading is just really perfectly matched, but uh, I can slope saw in lighter winds using this than I can with most of my other slope saws. Highly recommend it again, and extremely cheap too. This was, what was it, about $80 or something when I bought it. And it comes with a, a PVC plastic fuselage too, which is just perfect for slope sawing. And I've got my little squishy nose cone on there. Excellent plane. All right, so that'll do it for this episode. Coming up next, we have a few more scratch builds and I dabble in multi-rotors. And then I started receiving uh, requests to do reviews of plane by different companies. And the first one was uh, from Gearbest um, to do a review of a little quad. And then came a, a request to do a review of the Wing Wing Z84. So the Z84, also bought myself a Hobby King Cloud Surfer, and there's also the the atrocious Volantex Ranger 757-4. See you next time.